Good day students, welcome to the AP Calc AB mock for response questions. We're going to be looking at the uh, motion problems that have been developed by compiling the different problems from the 2006 to the 2013 um, pre response release questions. We're going to be looking for displacement, position, distance, velocity, speed, acceleration, and average velocity. Okay, let's take a look at the, the first question. So it says uh, for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 9, um, the particle moves along the x-axis. The velocity of the particle at time t is given by v of t equals 3 cosine e to the 2t over 3 plus 1. The particle's position is given by s of t, and it is also known that s of 0 is equal to 20. The acceleration of the particle is given by a of t equals negative 2e to the 2t over 3 sine e to the 2t over 3. Part A. What is the expression for the total distance covered in the first two seconds? So we're just uh, setting up the expression. We are not actually finding out uh, any, we're not doing any actual calculations, all right? So for part A, um, before we write down the expression for the uh, total distance, let's write down what the formula is. So distance uh, from, let's say, from A to B, all right, for some time interval, A to B, um, can be given by an integral expression. So the integral of, from A to B, of the absolute value of the velocity dt. Okay, so that's the um, expression or the formula for finding distance. You have to remember that uh, distance is a scalar quantity, but position or displacement um, are, are vector quantities. They have uh, signs attached to them. So the absolute value here basically indicates that if the particle is going to the left or right, is considered as covering positive distance, all right? So that's the formula. So let's go ahead and write down what the expression for the total distance covered in the first two seconds are. So our total distance, we're gonna be going from zero all the way to two, can be given by the integral from zero to two of the absolute value of V of T, which is three cosine e to the two, uh, t over 3 plus 1, called the absolute value dt. So this is the expression for the total distance. Or you can write it like this, uh, where v is equal to this uh, expression, and then you just put in 0 and 2 for your limits of integration. All right, so there goes the expression for total distance. Now the b part, it says, is the speed increasing or decreasing at t equals 1, justify. So I normally use my uh, um, coordinate system, my uh, four quadrants, to determine uh, the direction of the, sp uh, of the speed and if it's increasing or decreasing, okay? So let's uh, set up our coordinate system. We're going to call the x-axis our uh, velocity and our y-axis acceleration, okay? So you know that this is the positive x, this is the negative x, so we have positive velocity, negative velocity, positive acceleration upstairs, and negative acceleration downstairs here, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and determine the signs of our four quadrants. This is pretty easy. We have plus, plus. That means velocity and acceleration are positive. Here, our velocity is negative, acceleration is positive. Here, they're both negative. Here, um, velocity is positive and acceleration is negative. So what, is, what do all these signs tell us? Well, you want to keep in mind that any time the velocity and acceleration are the same sign, the object speeds up. Okay, it speeds up in what direction? In the direction of the sign of the velocity. Okay, so in this problem, the particle is moving along the x-axis. So positive velocity means to the right, negative velocity means to the left. Okay, so what does quadrant one mean? In quadrant one, we have the particle is going to be speeding, speeding up in what direction? 
since the velocity is positive, it's going to be going to the right, okay, or forward. In this quadrant, the signs are different. Anytime the signs are different, the object is going to be slowing down. So the object is slowing down in what direction? Velocity is negative, so slowing down, moving in the left direction, okay? Um, here, the, both signs are the same, just like in quadrant one. So if both signs are the same, remember that the object is speeding up, speeding up. In what direction? Velocity is negative, so it's going to the left. In quadrant four, the object is going to be, uh, is going to be, um, let's see, the signs are different, so the signs are different. The object is going to be slowing down, so slowing down. In what direction? Velocity is positive to the right, okay? So this chart can help us answer this question in B. Uh, um, was, it, was the speed increasing or decreasing at t equals 1? So all we just need to know, there's a sign of the velocity and acceleration at the specified time. Okay, so we just have to evaluate V of 1. What is the sign of V of 1? And what is the sign of A of 1? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter these into the graphing menu. There are other ways that this can be done, but one way you can do it is by um, evaluating this with, with a graph, okay? So let's go to the graphing menu for function 1. Y1, I will enter the velocity function. Let's see what the velocity function is. So velocity function is 3 cosine. 3 cosine um, e to the 2t over 3, so 2t um, over 3, close the exponential expression, close the cosine function, plus 1, enter. Now let's examine our pretty prints to make sure it's consistent with the function here. We have 3 cosine e to the 2x uh, over 3 plus 1. Notice that the independent variable for your graphing menu and your, graph, your graphing calculators are x's. So wherever you have t, you just put an x, okay? If you put a t here, that will be wrong because it's graphing another variable. You look at it as a constant. So um, make sure that you follow the independent variable of, the, of your calculators, all right? So that goes our velocity function. Let's enter our acceleration function is negative two, um, negative two e to the two t. So we're going to make it two x. Close the uh, numerator divided by three, and then close the exponential uh, argument <laughs> sine. Sine um, e again e to the two t two x divided by three. Close that. All right, press enter, and that's what you get. Anytime you enter a function in your calculator, you always want to cross check to make sure that you have it correctly, or else all your answers will be inaccurate. All right, so. Velocity, we've already checked out the acceleration uh, function, negative 2 e to the 2t over 3, sine e to the 2t over 3, excellent, that's what we want. Now, all we just need to do is um, evaluate these two functions when t equals 1, all right? So there are two ways you can do this. You can go to the table menu or you can go to the graph, all right? Let's use the table first. If we go diamond F5, it takes us to the table, and we can see that when x or t equals 1, our velocity and acceleration are both negatives, okay? So that means the object is going to be speeding up in the left direction, okay? So it's going to be speeding up since the signs are the same. Um, another way to do this, which is a little bit longer, you, uh, you press diamond F3, let's graph the function. So that's a graph of the velocity function right there. Okay. 
And then the acceleration should be coming up in a second. There goes the acceleration function. All right, so it keeps on going. What we care about is from zero to nine, that's the window we care about. So we can basically adjust our x-axis. Let me stop the graph in here. We can go to the window and adjust our the constraints on our independent variable. Okay, x mean we can go from zero, x max to nine. All right, uh, and then go ahead and graph it again. So we can see what's happening here. After one, it goes negative for the velocity function. And then for acceleration function, this is basically negative after one and then switches to positive somewhere here. Now that we have the two functions graphed, how can we uh, determine what the outputs are for the two intervals, all right? So in order to do that, we're just going to simply use the trace uh, menu to generate what um, the output values are going to be, okay? So let's wait for it to finish graphing. Okay, so you're going to hit trace F3, and then you can enter um, which inputs you want. So we want one, so you press one, enter, and you see that our output is negative. Okay, velocity is negative when X is one. Now what function is this? This is the velocity function. Remember um, in our Y window, uh, the first function was the velocity function, right? So that's why um, we know that it, when you trace F3 trace for X equals one, this is this is your answer all right and then if you want to jump functions just use the up or down arrow so this one goes down to the second function and then we want to know what the acceleration is when x is equal to, or t is equal to one and we also see that it's negative okay so um what are we going to put here v of one all we care about is a sign v of one is less than zero and a of one is less than zero so what can we conclude? Um, since since um, the acceleration, acceleration and velocity of the particle particle have the same sign like you're working as a team okay have the same sign the object or the particle is speeding up speeding up at t equals one okay so the quadrant under consideration is quadrant three where we both have the same sign okay okay now let's take a look at um part c it says what direction was the particle moving at t equals one remember the velocity indicates the direction of the particle at t equals one the velocity was negative as indicated in part b so that means that our object is going to be moving to the left okay so let's write down the um our answer and the justification the particle is moving to the left at t equals 1 because uh, v of 1 is less than 0. You can see that the velocity is 0, is negative when t is equal to 1. All right, so now let's take a look at the, the d part.